I'm a 20 year old college student and currently majoring in psychology at my university. It's a very broad field, but you can definitely get a decent paying job depending on experience and networking. I would study for big exams most nights as these were definitely not easy tests and you really had to earn your grade to succeed in this field. This happened about two weeks ago on campus while on a walk. It was located in the suburbs and away from all the crime, so you'd often see students wandering alone at night. Well, one night, I had been studying for hours in my dorm for my midterm when I decided that I'd take a midnight stroll through campus to just clear my mind. At this point, I was mainly focused on studying, but walks benefit your mental health and I knew that was more important. Anyway, I leave my dorm and exit the building to get my walk on. Now, my campus has this sort of park with walkways and lampposts to light the way. For some reason, I didn't see anyone else out as it was common to see at least a few people out walking. Seeing that it was nearing 2am, I sort of understood why and just continued my jog when I see someone about 40 or so feet away. He was tall and lanky and appeared to be wearing a hoodie. I live in upstate New York, so it was chilly out even during the spring. I think nothing of it and continue my walk when I finally approach him giving him a wave as I passed by. For whatever reason, he stops in his tracks and says in this really grainy voice to wait. I stop and take out my earbuds as he slowly walks towards me. I ask him how I could be of help, and he asks me where the nearest exit out of campus was. I point to the direction of the west building, and he gives me a nod and goes on his way. To give you a better description of this guy, he looked nothing like a college student. He was tall with a trimmed beard and appeared to be in his late 30s or early 40s. He looked like a dad, and I figured that maybe he was just visiting his daughter or something. However, for some reason though, he definitely gave off such a weird vibe I can't even explain. Something in my gut just told me it was off somehow. Anyway, I finish my walk and call it a night and walk back to my dorm to go to sleep. I wasn't completely satisfied but I'd say I slept for a good five hours or so before waking up to the sound of heavy knocking from my door. Being annoyed, I look at the clock and see that it's about 7 a.m. and I go to open the door. Standing there were two police officers along with campus security. Over the sound of radio chatter, one of the officers pulls out his phone and shows me a picture asking if I've seen this person. It was the same guy I had encountered on my walk. The photo showed him walking inside of the hallway with his head down. I told the officers that I did know him and they then sent me to the dean where I was brought in for questioning along with three others. Turns out, I was right. That man never went to this university. He was in an intimate relationship with an 18 year old freshman. The building he was shown leaving was his girlfriend's dorm after killing her and hiding her body in the closet. She had apparently cheated on him with another person, which caused this man to become seriously deranged. The reason why he had wondered about the exit off campus was to try and leave because he was trying to get away from his crime, claimed police. This was my first verified encounter of a murder without even knowing it. I had my suspicions from the start, but I never actually knew what he did. That part of campus was closed down for a week, and I'll never shake the paranoia of him off me. It's horrifying to think that what that girl's final thoughts were as he ended her life. I've been a college professor at the University of Oregon for about two years now. 
I teach basic mechanics at the School of Engineering, where many of the engineering majors would take classes. I'd also like to mention that I'm a female and have a lot of male students who participate in many of my classes. I say this because, being the only young female professor in the department, you definitely get a lot of looks from male students who clearly have an attraction toward you. Obviously, there were none who made any moves, but it was obvious many of them wanted to. However, there was this one student I had that takes the prize. This took place last year during the fall semester, and I would be teaching a machine learning for life science course. It's basically a course that teaches you the fundamentals for the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Those who major in bioengineering or engineering itself will probably know what I'm talking about. With the exception of these two female students, most of my students were of course males, but there was this one student who seemed to really take an interest in me. As I said, I'm used to this kind of thing, so I wasn't going to look too much into it. His name was Kevin, and he was very smart and friendly. He'd always ask me questions after class, and even came to my office hours for help with homework. Even though I knew he needed help, I knew it was still an opportunity for him to see me more often. One day, during mid-November, Kevin comes up to my desk asking a question I wasn't expecting from any student. He says that him and his family were throwing this huge Thanksgiving party and that he'd love for me to come. I thank him for the invite, but tell him that I couldn't make it as I already had plans. I could tell that he seemed disappointed, but at the end of the day, there was nothing I could really do about it. It's safe to say I felt bad in a way, but the university's policy states that we couldn't have a romantic relationship with a student, not that I even wanted one. As time progressed, however, the more strange Kevin began to get with me. He started asking me things he shouldn't have known about. Everything from how my social life was, to naming all of my closest friends or relatives. He even mentioned specific things I had personally talked about to people he didn't know. While I was definitely pissed, I remained professional and tell him that it's inappropriate to ask me that and to please stay out of my personal life. I have no idea how he knew the names of my friends or family members or how he got them, but I honestly don't want to know. I figured maybe he had overheard some things during the two hour long lectures I gave, but I wasn't too sure. He seemed to have gotten the hint and stopped talking to me for a good couple of weeks until the last week of the semester. He had come to my office hours and had handed me a note talking about how I was such a great professor. I of course was flattered by this and told him it was my pleasure. Long story short, the university went on break after and I only heard from him once about some classes for recommendation. It's safe to say I completely forgot about him for the rest of the break and somewhat enjoyed myself. After that, winter break had ended and school let back in, and I hoped to God I wouldn't get Kevin in my class. Thankfully I didn't, but about a month into the new semester, I started getting weird emails from different accounts. At first I didn't know who it was, but after looking more into it, I realized it was Kevin. He was saying things about how he misses me and wants to meet me. I didn't respond to any of his emails and even blocked him. However, even after blocking him, he still tried contacting me other ways. I started receiving emails from throwaway accounts, random spoof numbers on my phone, and even friend requests on my Instagram. It eventually came to a point where I had to get a new phone number and Instagram account. After reporting Kevin to the university, he was then suspended from campus and was told that if he ever contacted me again, he would be arrested. Things remained somewhat normal for the time being and I didn't hear from him for months until one day in March. 
I had gotten a call from my chairman saying that campus security had found him in my office with a knife. Why he had a knife with him, I'll never know, but needless to say, he was arrested and thrown in prison. Had I gone into my office that day, God only knows what would have happened to me. I don't know if I was going to get robbed, assaulted, or worse. Turns out, he had actually been harassing several female students and even threatened them if they didn't go out with him. It's safe to say that Kevin is a very dangerous, twisted individual. Believe me when I say that I've gotten some pretty creepy encounters from male students, but nothing even remotely close to this. I ended up taking a whole semester off due to this, and I never heard from Kevin after that. It's been over a year now, and I have moved past it with the help of a therapist, but it's still something I'll never forget. It still haunts me till this day, and I still cower at the sound of his name. For some context, this happened when I was 22 while attending school from out of state. I had spent nearly four years studying my field of interest and graduation was only one semester away. I had to take another semester as the university had messed up one of my classes that I wasn't even supposed to take. Needless to say, instead of reimbursing me or waiving it, they simply marked it as one of my electives. It was a stupid decision, but whatever. Anyway, every semester the school had required all students to change their housing contracts and switch dorms. I'm still not sure about the reason for this, but I found it unnecessary in my opinion. The first day of classes came around, and shortly after, I was introduced to my new roommate. His name was Gabe, and had actually been doing the same major as me. He seemed okay, although a bit off, but I really couldn't put my finger on it. He would sometimes give me dry responses or not say anything at all whenever I tried to make small talk with him. Needless to say, he wasn't a people person and was very socially awkward. Sometimes I'd come back from class to find Gabe just sitting at the edge of his bed staring at the wall. I'd say hi most of the time only to either get ignored or a dry response. He'd stare at the wall for hours on end, even if it meant missing one of his classes. He said it felt peaceful. I have no idea what he meant by that, but I just kind of minded my own business. Over the course of a few weeks, I'd come to my dorm to see him eating my food. The crazy thing is that when I caught him doing it, he didn't stop. He just continued eating as if he didn't care. I didn't mind it at first, seeing as there were small snacks, but as it progressed I told him to please stop. I guess it seemed to work as my food stopped disappearing. Fast forward about a week later, I get out of class with a friend and head down to the auditorium so we could study together. I know. Not the ideal place to study, but it was always empty except for when performances were happening. We go inside and find a small place in the back to study when she looks by the stage and sees someone. It only took me a few seconds to realize that it was Gabe approaching us while giving us a wave. The girl I had been studying with had asked if I knew him, to which I explained that he was my roommate. He walks up to us and stays silent for a few seconds before saying hi and walking off. I could read him like a book and knew there was definitely something off about him. We shrug it off and after studying, she was nice enough to drop me off at my dorm. I thank her and told her I'd see her tomorrow and that perhaps we could study again before heading up to my room. I go inside, and this time, on the edge of my bed, is Gabe sitting in the dark. In a confused tone, I ask, Dude, what the hell are you doing sitting in the dark? He apologizes, telling me he was just bored and goes to his bed and clearly pretends to fall asleep. 
Not wanting to pry and too tired to care, I turn off my light and get about a good two hours of sleep when I was awoke to a noise. It only took me a few seconds to realize what it was, but I then realized that it sounded like water. I turn on my light and see Gabe pouring some sort of powder into my water bottle. He sees me and immediately puts the bottle down on my nightstand and says he was just sleepwalking. That was it. I told him he had officially crossed the line and went down to the front to report him. Gabe, of course, denied any wrongdoings, but when I showed security what he put in my water, he was arrested. Turns out, the powder he had put in my water bottle was tracking powder. It's a very dangerous substance used to poison rodents such as rats and mice. Honestly, if I hadn't woken up, I probably wouldn't have been writing this right now. I'd like to think that Gabe had went to jail, but I'm not 100% sure. Two days later, I was switched with a new roommate who wasn't the best, but better than Gabe by a landslide. The semester was over in the blink of an eye, and I was eventually able to graduate on time. It wasn't until four or five years after where something happened that sent chills down my spine. I had now been living with my girlfriend, the same girl I had studied with back in college. We had lived in an apartment and both had good jobs. One day, I had been out of town visiting my parents a few states away. I had been shopping at their local supermarket to get them food when I thought I noticed someone awfully familiar by the checkout lane. It took me a few seconds, but I then came to the realization that it was Gabe. He didn't see me, and I didn't want to take any chances of going up to him, fearing of what he'd do. After that, I never saw him again, and never told my parents or my girlfriend. There was something about his face that just gave it away, that it was 99.9% .9 him. I have no idea what he was doing in my parents' city or what he was up to now. I just pray that I don't see him again.